Welcome to the Terrible Podcast with your host from SteelersDepot.com, where you can find all your latest and greatest Steelers news. It's Dave Bryan and Alex Kazora, always lit, talking Steelers. And now, here's Dave and Alex. Welcome to the Terrible Podcast, another special edition of the Terrible Podcast, Pittsburgh Steelers Training Camp 2022. It is Tuesday. It is August the 9th. It is 5 p.m. Eastern time right now. Getting this one done a little bit earlier because the Steelers had practice, uh, had to move it up uh, because of inclement weather being on the way. They had that practice at St. Vincent College uh, in Latrobe, and Alex Kazora scurried out the door first thing early this morning, was able to get there in time to uh, observe it all. So with that, Alex, happy Tuesday. We're getting closer to preseason now. The flip card, the official media flip card for the game has now been released. So that must Ooh. mean football is Steelers football is close. Or six weeks of winter. I'm getting those ones confused of which is which. But yeah, we've had Monday night lights. We've had Tuesday morning practice. I assume tomorrow will be Wednesday midnight madness at mm. St. Vincent College. So Crazy day, but a, a good decision by the team because literally as practice wrapped up today around whatever time it was, uh, I think one o'clock, uh, the rain started to roll in. And so it kind of worked out well, and we'll see what tomorrow brings. Uh, uh, did you take a towel? <laughs> I did. Didn't need it. Uh, I, I'm literally running out of room in my right in the rain notebook. So hopefully there's no more rain in the future, although the forecast suggests otherwise. So we'll see how that goes. All right. Uh, as we like to do at the top of the show, give a shout out to uh, the special edition of the podcast sponsor, that being uh, Touring Plans and Lynn Testa and the fine folks uh, who do all the fine work for him. So, Alex, uh, tell the folks about uh, Touring Plans. Definitely mention them on each episode of the podcast. They've been a longtime sponsor of our Steelers Depot training camp coverage, uh, planning a trip to Disney. You want to talk to those guys. They're going to set you straight. Make sure that you're you know, as least stressed as possible for what certainly can be a stressful experience for a lot of families. Len's a really good guy. He comes to me every single year. Um, it's a very you know quick uh, conversation. Hey, man, you want to you know, have the, the sponsor again? Fantastic. And work it out really quickly. He's also a big time Steelers fan. And so it's always good to support some Steeler fans as well. So go to touringplans.com and tell them Len Testa and Steelers Depot sent you. Are you the Omar Khan of, uh, <laughs> of advertising? <laughs> I guess. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how good Omar is, I suppose, before I talk about how good I am. All right, uh, Alex, uh, a little bit of housekeeping at the start of this show, uh, as we like to do with the uh, kind of the injury report and uh, who's practicing, who's not. Uh, a lot of coming and going now at this point. I think a handful of the guys that got injured on, what would that have been, uh, Saturday and Monday, uh, ha uh, having problems getting on the field today and one new injury to, uh, to talk about today. Yeah, the one we'll, we'll touch on the latter point there. The one mid practice injury is Montrevious Adams. I did not personally see it happen. That was during the second team session, the run uh, session, the full tackling session there. So it looks like an ankle on him. I don't know severity. I heard there was a cart involved, and that could be bad, but also, you know, typically, especially for the big guys, they're going to get carted up because it's a pretty long walk up uh, the St. Vincent stairs, and there's no really need to do that. In terms of guys not working today, Mateo Durant, undisclosed. It might be an oblique thing. He was kind of messing with something yesterday. Mm. Deontay Johnson with the hip. Alex Highsmith with the ribs. Jannard Avery groin. Zach Gentry, don't know what the issue is there. UG3, of course, still in that boot with that right foot injury. Marcus Allen, hamstring. Derek Watt, shoulder. Kevin Dotson, right ankle. Alu Alu, Killebrew continued to work in individual sessions. Pat Frymuth returned full, so that was one piece of good news. Nashi Harris worked in positional groups today not in team but he's working his way back so that's good Larry Ogunjobi continues to work in team so no issues after his first full day yesterday um, and I assume most of these injuries appear to be minor we'll have to see what how long UG3 is going to be out for that's probably going to be a little while and we'll have to check on Montrevious Adams tomorrow 
Uh, if you're a younger player on the, uh, you know, uh, you know, outside the bubble and, and trying to stick around, now's not a good time to be missing time because exactly one week from today on August the 16th at 4 p.m. New York time, clubs must reduce their roster to a maximum of 85 players on their active uh, inactive list. Uh, so that will be here before we know it. Obviously, a game uh, on Saturday, it's uh, sounding like it's going to be a pretty Pretty, pretty decent list of guys not playing in that game, either because they're established veterans or because of injuries. Right. If you're a young guy, you better be healthy pretty quick here, because if you're not getting this week's work of practice and preparation in, you're probably not going to play. So if you're, say, a Mateo Durant, for example, you better get back and get at least one, two practices in this week before uh, Saturday's game against Seattle. Otherwise, you may sit that one out and those valuable reps will go to somebody else. Okay, uh, let's start on the offensive side of football and what you observed today. And we will start at the quarterback position where you are unequivocally ready to say that Mitch Trubisky uh, will be a pro bowler again in uh, 2000. Mm-hmm. And, uh, no, I'm not going to go that far. But uh, He'll be the MVP. He'll be the Nickelodeon <laughs> most valuable player again. Uh, but he was the best quarterback out there today, no? He was. And you guys know I don't often sit here and say and rank the quarterbacks and don't typically, though I have once or twice before this camp, say this guy was the best today based on my gut feeling and then going through my notes again. But today was one of those days where I sat there and went Mitch Trubisky was easily the best quarterback out there today. And that started with a good seven shot session with a really good touch throw to Chase Claypool for uh, a touchdown in the back right corner of the end zone, a strong throw for 24 yards in high red zone work to George Pickens. Those two continue to have. Uh, good chemistry and a good connection overall. It was a little bit about Pickett with two interceptions, Rudolph just being okay, but it was also you know very much more about Trubisky running the show well, managing things well, pushing the ball downfield, making some good throws, showing touch, accuracy, consistency, all led him to be the best quarterback at St. Vincent College today. Is it hard to sit in those stands with the picket pole, uh, sitting on top of a picket pole? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've gotten some hate mail. I mean, it, it's really Tuesday, to this point. Tuesday's the day for some reason. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Tuesday's the day that you you catch shrapnel on 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 Twitter for some reason, and uh, one of the one of the unknown eggs uh, mm-hmm. uh, took a shot at you today. Yeah, it was what one of those name bunch of numbers kind of guys, uh, which is okay. fine. I just have fun with it. I don't I don't take any offense to it at this point. Um, I mean, I've been called in, in you know how it is. You've probably been called the same that I, I just, <laughs> I've, I've been called, equally love whatever you've been Trubisky. called. I've been yeah. called worse. That's fair. But I equally both love and hate Trubisky. I love and hate Rudolph. I love and hate Kenny Pickett. It just depends on what I tweeted at that moment. Um, I think I've been pretty fair and transparent. They've all had good days. They've all had bad days. Anyone who says otherwise is, is probably actually lying to you if, you, if you if they don't talk about the ebb and flow again. Yeah. Uh, you're the most, you're, you're so honest. I'd play poker with you on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good one. I like that. That's uh, a quality joke. uh, listen, uh, how did the rotation go in seven shots? Pickett worked ahead of Rudolph. And then in team, it was generally Rudolph ahead of Pickett with some mixing and matching along the way. So you guys know at this point, I, I don't get too caught up in the rotations. I look at more of the overall reps, the situational kind of reps, uh, early on though, it was Pickett getting, what two no, no no two snaps i think would have been in seven shots rudolph one trubisky the first four and then it was kind of rudolph generally running ahead of pickett except for the last team session which was high red zone situational where pickett was getting more snaps probably to get him more work in situational football uh considering mason rudolph has done that you know more in his career all right uh any sense whatsoever? I mean, I, we'll probably find out more on Friday. I assume Mike Tomlin will meet the media on Friday and kind of outline who may or may not play and who he's leaving the light on for and what the, uh, more importantly, what, what, what the quarterback rotation look like. Any, any, any kind of early, you know, feelings one, one day later? Yeah, I've been asked about this a couple of times and uh, Tomlin usually gives a rough outline to it and you're never going to be held to that because game flow in circumstance can dictate, you know, how many snaps you get and how good a guy looks or if a guy needs an extra rep or stuff like that. Um, I, I would say Mitch Trubisky will start. I think that's a pretty safe assumption at this point. My feeling is he'll get the first quarter, maybe a, the first drive of the second quarter. Mason Rudolph will play the middle portion. So finish out the half and probably start the, the second half. And then Kenny Pickett late third quarter, fourth quarter to finish things out is kind of my rough guess of how things will go. More bad exchanges today. 
There were. It's been sloppy. It was really good at the start. I read about the offensive line to begin camp, about how everything was clean, and maybe that just kind of, you know, it was camp wears, and there was some weather, and you're in the morning practice today and stuff like that. But you had a bad exchange with uh, with Gil- Nate Gilliam and Kenny Pickett, and that you know, caused a, a dead ball there. And then a shotgun snap from John LeGlue to Pickett that LeGlue just skipped about about halfway to Kenny Pickett. That killed another play, and LeGlue, LeGlue got pulled out because of it. So um, just some sloppiness today at training camp. What is the biggest uh, jump that you've seen since the start of camp to now with with, 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 with Kenny Pickett? Um, I think he's pushed the ball downfield a bit better. I feel like the snap-to-throw times have generally gotten better. I'm not timing that. Maybe I should. That's something to think about. Uh, there was one play today where it felt like he had an open Steven Sims deep on the left sideline, didn't pull the trigger, and then kind of held on to the ball too long. But those moments have been less frequent. I would say. So I think just general consistency, probably improved accuracy overall, and then just getting the ball out a bit quicker, quicker, feeling more comfortable, being in a rhythm, going through progressions better. All those things will speed up your snap to throw times. All right. uh, Let's jump this time to wide receiver position. A lot of talk still about uh, uh, George Pickens and, uh, and it sounds like with, with good reason at this, uh, at this point, Uh, talk about the wide receiver group and uh, did, did Pickens, get back to having a, a, a more noticeable day today. He did maybe a little less in team, but he had the 24 yard catch there. And it actually had a, cu- there, a couple of catches from Trubisky. I'm going to tally those numbers later tonight, but it was the one-on-one situations that, you know, he certainly shined in, which is no major surprise. Even when the, this team drafted him, you kind of knew, knew the traits and tools that he had to work well in those jump ball situations. And you saw that early on in camp, but had a couple of really good reps against Cam Sutton today fades that he just skied for and you know spun and found the ball and just leapt over cam sutton then hit the gritty on sutton both times there so there's a little flair to it as well not in his face but kind of just in the end zone and sutton was well aware of what was happening though i'm sure um so you're just seeing the traits the ball control uh plucking the ball away from his frame consistently you know not being a body catcher and into his chest and stuff like that everything is just high pointing um and just really playing outside his frame for an already pretty big long wiry kind of dude. So you just see those traits there that are really attractive. You expect him to be a first team guy uh, uh, against uh, against the Seahawks? Yes. Uh, I assume that maybe Deontay won't play. We'll see what the hip looks like. I mean, if he does, it'll be a little bit, but you'll see a lot of George Pickens and you'll see that early on uh, in, in Saturday's game. Anything uh, uh, about the rest of the wide receiver group? I think Moz Boykin has done better overall. Um, I think it was a quiet first week for him as he kind of got more comfortable with a new team. And then he's picked it up here a little bit, still battling Anthony Miller. Cody White has really fallen back in this battle. You know, he ran as the with the ones to start training camp. And Anthony Miller passed him and you've seen Cody White, you know, still be involved, obviously, but not really running with the ones and groups getting healthier and those kinds of things have pushed him back as well. So it's still that battle between Miller and Boykin for that number six spot. All right, anything, uh, any updates on the running back position? A lot of opportunity for Jalen Warren and Master Teague. I think Mike Tomlin touched on that after practice because no Mateo Durant, Najee Harris not working in team. Uh, Benny Snell and Anthony McFarlane got their usual complement of touches, but you know, after the first five, six plays, those guys are done. And so then it's left to Jalen Warren and Master Teague to get the rest. And so those guys probably feeling it. They're probably in the cold tub as we speak right now, but they're getting a lot of valuable work that Jalen Warren had after, you know, Benny Snell had a great run yesterday and, and Jalen Warren matched him today. I think it was 20, 25 yards, broke a tackle, dragged uh, multiple defenders for a, a really good run up the middle. And so you see that bowling ball kind of mentality and, and makeup that Jalen Warren has. And while he's had a couple of bad days and some ebb and flow to it, he's a young guy that's expected. He's really bounced back. He's met the moment really well, Dave. I really love to watch guys respond when they have a bad day. Warren had a good start to camp, probably feeling it a little bit, a little, you know, I, I don't want to say full of himself, but it's, it's, it's feeling that press a little bit, has a bad day. How do you respond to that? I think Warren's done a good job responding to that, and that's a really key mental trait and, and box to check for a young guy. going to be interesting to see if Mateo Durant can get himself back on the field by the time the game rolls around because we're probably only likely, we're, we're probably not going to see any Najee, right? And right. uh, Benny, Snell, uh, Benny Snell football, may, maybe a couple series, right? A little bit, but I think you want to see the young guys more. But I think Snow will play the first two series, we'll call it. All right. And then uh, a lot of Durant, a lot of Teague, and possibly some Durant in there, huh? 
Yeah, and, McFarland. And, and, and Anthony McFarland, too. Right. About him. The concern with Durant is I was like, man, he showed some power yesterday. That's impressive. And he's hurt today. It's like the one mm. time you show some power, now you can't practice. So hopefully he gets back in time. All right. The tight ends line's a little shorter, huh? Right. I mean, if, now it was kind of the same because Frymuth came back and then Gentry ducked out. So it was the same number of, of four guys, I guess, of Hayward, Sternberger, Frymuth, and Kevin Rader. Um, Rader had some battles and some of the one on one uh Type stuff with Lyndon Stevens. I, I I thought today was a good response that you really with with the crowd a bit thinner with the time change you could hear things a bit better and I really love that because you could really hear Mike Tomlin challenge some of these guys needle some of these guys. It was one play where Lyndon Stevens, the cornerback, ripped the ball away from Kevin Raider. Tomlin got on Raider a little bit for that. A couple of plays later, Raider makes a really good catch over his head, and so uh, Demonte Casey similar thing going against Jay Sternberger and some of the one on one type battles today. Uh, fighting and high point and knocking a football away after Sternberger beat him on a slant earlier in the rep. So not a whole lot to talk about with a tight end group in general. Um, but I just like some of the competition and, and again, meeting that moment at Mike Tomlin certainly presents the moment quite often to these guys. Uh, was Connor, uh, Hey, we're doing more stuff uh, at fullback. Yeah, a little bit. Um, he also did some, did some split back stuff, which is sort of like very like 2000. There was one of these split back snap with Snell to the left and Hayward to the right of Mitch Trubisky and then Hayward lead blocking on a Snell carry for a couple. So again, Derek Watt being out, making Connor Hayward be even more versatile for this offense. Okay, that leaves uh, offensive line for us. And that uh, right now, pre- pretty, pretty golden opportunity for Kendrick Green with uh, 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 with Kevin. Uh, uh, with Kevin Dotson, uh, yeah, yeah, Kevin Dotson sideline with that ankle injury. Yeah, that's what, haven't had many offensive line injuries so far. A core for missed today, and that was about it. So it was interesting to kind of reset the offensive lines with a, a starter, you know, co-starter being out. So let me just kind of read off. And there was again some mixing and matching mm. later in the day, but first team offensive line: Dan Moore, Kendrick Green, Mason Cole, James Daniels, Chuck Wilma core for second team: Joe Haig, J.C. Hostenauer at left guard, uh, Nate Gilliam at center, John LeGlue at right guard. Trent Scott at right tackle, and then third team, Jordan Tucker, Chris Owens, Sean McGlue at center, Shaz Green right guard, Jake Dixon at right tackle. Again, those guys moved around a little bit later in practice. I saw Shaz Green at left tackle, um, but certainly Kendrick Green getting all those first team reps today. In terms of the actual performance, I think Mason Cole's been solid. I don't talk about him too much, and that's probably a good thing. Obviously, mm-hmm. there was no, no snap issues with him. The other guys had some snap problems today, but I know Gilliam is not a natural center and I mean, Cole has played a lot of guard as well, but putting all that aside, I think Cole's been solid. He's got a good anchor against bull rushes and one-on-ones. He seems to really hold his own. Uh, he, he struggles more with, with finesse and swim moves and swipes and stuff like that, but against power, he's a pretty you know anchored-in kind of dude. What thing are you looking for uh, most uh, uh, Saturday night offensive line? Just how do you play as a, as a collective five? I mean, are your combo blocks clean? Are you guys on the right track based on the flow of the linebacker? Are you passing off the of stunts? You don't, you know, the blitzes. I mean, there are some blitzes in training camp, obviously, but it's a little bit different feel overall. Um, just how do you work as a collective five? Are you staying clean? Are they going to be holding calls on first and 10 that just kill a drive? Are they going to be clean exchanges with the center and the quarterback? That's been an issue the last couple of days. So it, obviously look at the individual, but if you're just kind of looking big picture, how does that five play together as a unit? That's what offensive line is all about. One guy fails, they all fail. And so that's kind of a starting point. I'll look for that group. All right. Uh, defensive line. What's new there? Uh, not a lot new. Now. Well, the, the injury to Adams is interesting. That's kind of really setting up the lines there because Tyson Aluwalu, I think he's close to a return, but he's not all the way back yet. And then Adams goes down. And so our favorite Henry Mondo was playing nose tackle. And Mondo's got some quickness and he's, he's looking in, in some of the one on one situations, but not a guy you want to see a lot of nose tackle snaps. And behind that, it's really just like, Donovan Cheater playing some snaps there as well. Uh, Khalil Davis, J.C. Haas, and I were had some of the best battles of the day. I think in O-line, D-line, Tomlin put them together like six times total. Like they just kept going after it at, over and over and over again. Uh, Davis had some wins. Haas and I were had some wins. Davis, though, literally ran over Haas and I were on one rep, put Haas and I were on his butt, but Haas and I responded uh, better the next couple of reps there. So I think Khalil and Carlos Davis will have really active preseason games where they're going to be making plays, getting in backfield, and just kind of wrecking things for young, ungelled, opposing offensive lines. Uh, assuming the uh, the the uh, Montrevious Adams uh, ankle injury isn't, you know, anything that's going to interfere with start of, start of the season, there still doesn't seem, you know, it doesn't seem to be any spots open, right? It just comes down to right now, they're going to keep uh, seven or not, right? 
Right. I don't see any spots being open. It's guys trying to fight for spots. I mean, it's, it's, um, at what's Holland's kind of phrase there, 10 pounds in a five pound bag. I mean, you got oh, so many guys here trying to go. fight for those spots. You got Carlos Davis and we're on, we're on our game curious. early today. We're, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, we're not, we're not all, uh, uh, worn out from the day. So we're, uh, we're, we're rapid, rapid firing some, uh, some yeah. phrases here. So I think it's a really good battle. Again, I think, I don't know how you go to six, even going to seven will be tough with some of the other guys behind who you lose a Carlos Davis to waivers. I think that's possible, uh, but that's all you know down the road type stuff. So first we'll check on Adams, obviously, and make sure Alu Alu is good to start the year. I think he will be, but it's a really competitive group. Okay. Uh, outside linebacker, uh, uh, no, no high Smith today. I'm, I'm imagining they're kind of watching what they do with TJ Watt out there to, to some degree, right? Well, he worked in team the whole day. He did not work in O-line, D-line, which Chuck Wuma Corp were very happy to see. He got to go against Delonte Scott, and that's a lot easier than getting your butt kicked by T.J. Watt half the time in O-line, D-line. Uh, Scott the, continues to do well in run session, getting up blocks, being active, being involved, a very well-rounded you know, pass rush and run defense. He's probably a bit better against the run, Scott is, than he is as a, as a pass rusher. He's not you know naturally twitchy or explosive or stuff like that, but really solid, technically sound leverage, setting the edge, and uh, just his overall run fits. And then Rondell Carter caught my attention. So, you know, mm. first day he was in full today, signed yesterday, did well in O-line, D-line yesterday. He was really active in run session, setting a physical edge, um, you know, pushing guys back, you know, bouncing runs wide and stuff like that. So I thought Rondell, Rondell Carter's got good size to him overall. And there's always like one guy that gets signed mid-camp that comes out of nowhere and kind of sticks a little bit. You know, Zach Banner was that guy several years ago. I don't think Carter's going to make the 53, but some of the injuries there. I mean, he's going to get a lot of burn Saturday, so I, I kind of like his game. Uh, who's the who's the number four still? Uh, obviously, the top three, uh, uh, including Jannard Avery in there behind Watt and uh, uh, Highsmith. Uh, is it Tuska or is it Scott? I would say Tuska, but I think there really hasn't been a clearly picked number three in the sense of second teams have always been uh, Avery and Tuska. So which guy would come in? Uh, Tuska, because like today... You know, with, with Alex Highsmith out, Avery was out as well. So I don't know who that next guy up would have been. And they've kind of run it more sides, where it's mostly Tuska left outside and Avery right outside. So they haven't really kind of declared that yet who that number three would be. Um, so I, I don't know there's a definitive answer on that. I think it would be Chenard Avery, but with, they, with the way they've kind of run things, it's not been super clear to tell. You think Derek's the better uh, special teams player? Yes, but I okay. think Avery's the better defender and just actual linebacker. Okay. All right. Uh, inside linebacker with the lines uh, thin. That was the subject of my terrible take today. Mm. How about Robert Spillane? I, I, he went maybe an overreaction, but I think a, a true one. I'll hit you, hit you early here, Dave. Robert Spillane had maybe the best practice any Steeler has had on a day so far this camp. Any individual practice. Spillane was everywhere. Really nope, good job. Nope, and, what? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Just individually, just a really A plus kind of day. He was great in one on ones. Even got beat by Connor Hayward off the line in a coverage drill. Hayward goes to the right corner. Spillane gets back in phase. Never looks back to the football because you're gonna you know, you're gonna lose your man. You're already trailing at that point. And then plays the pocket, breaks up the pass. Had another breakup in one v ones. He was awesome in run sessions, just shooting gaps and getting free. Um, he had a, a great. Uh, read and diagnose of a screenplay to Connor Hayward, and that went for zero. So Robert Spillane was everywhere today a really good day for him you know there's been some i don't know uh not really i i, I view it more speculation based on kind of kind of you know tongue and not tongue in cheek but just your classic uh cliche uh coaches talking about you know the inside linebackers and the house flame you know is in the mix for this thing uh, as well are you finding that uh, long story short, do you think Spillane has a legitimate chance of being the starting a linebacker alongside miles Jack in week one? It's really interesting. Short answer is yes. There's a chance. The margin of error that Devin Bush has right now is really small. And so I think they're very comfortable going to Spillane if they have to, it's interesting. Could they do some sort of three man rotation to start the year the way they're doing it right now? Is there a way you could carve out Spillane and more base and push in more sub package and nickel? I'm not quite sure, but Spillane is certainly putting all the heat you can on Devin Bush uh, so far. What is Devin Bush doing? Describe Devin Bush's camp to me to date. Pretty quiet, pretty nondescript. Um, 
I don't want to say it's been bad or terrible or anything, but it just I, I feel like the phrase is wanting more in Devin Bush. And, and again, it's, sometimes it's hard to see some of that stuff. But I look at him in the one on one coverage drills. I, I know those are slanted towards the offense. But I've seen other guys make plays, and Bush rarely makes plays. Sometimes he's not even really competitive or near or around the football, gives a big cushion there. I don't know if they're kind of messing with alignments and stuff like that, and that's all pre-planned. But just one thing more, I watch all these other guys make plays. Devin Bush has not really made a lot of plays, and that was what he was drafted to do and and to be. All right. uh, Anything left over? Uh, well, I'm excited to see though. And we talk, I think we talked about it yesterday or on the podcast one. Uh, and that's the subject of my terrible take today. I'm, I'm excited to see Buddy Johnson and Mark Robinson play a lot of snaps Saturday night. And they'll get a lot of snaps. And Johnson had a tip uh, pass on a little stick route by tight end that led to a Chris Steele interception. So Buddy Johnson really in my notes quite a bit. Uh, the last good, two good needs to be, uh, needs to be for sure. Okay. Uh, uh, secondary, uh, roll it all up into one cornerbacks and safeties together. Sure. Not a lot of notes on the safety position overall. Again, that group's getting a lot healthier. And so guys are kind of shuffling around. I thought James Pierre, you know, he's a big gambler on the football. He goes, he goes for the interception or the, you know, the big play every single time, essentially. And it paid off big today, picking off Kenny Pickett on what seemed like a good pass by Pickett, but Pierre really had a good job to drive and a diving full extension interception along the right sideline there. So he's certainly a feast for famine kind of guy. Uh, just Lane falling back. I talked about yesterday. I felt like Lane wasn't getting as many reps. I really wanted to hone in on that today and really track and chart that well. He's really playing like fourth team. Even Lyndon Stevens is getting some work ahead of him, and so that's not a good sign there. So, do you um, have a do you have a theory behind that? Uh, obviously, you don't know exactly why, but do you have do you have a theory behind that? I don't. Um, it just happens in camp sometimes. I remember, and this is a real big callback, but years ago, there was just one day. Like It's usually after an off day um, or somewhere around there, and it kind of happened starting yesterday with Justin Lane, uh, where I got to camp one day, and Brian Arnfeld, who was running like second team all camp, was now like third team, barely getting snaps. It just He just faded away. They went Brian Arnfeld. So it just seems to happen where they just have an off day, and they kind of Coaches, I guess, talk about it and want to make a move. And I mean, the group is getting healthier with Wallace back and stuff like that. So it is shuffling things a little bit, but it still feels like Lane is losing out, losing out snaps to Chris Steele, to Lyndon Stevens. And that's a really bad sign for him. Yeah, I was going to say that, that none of it can be taken as a good sign, right? No, no. So I will, I'll just put it this way. Justin Lane better change something fast. Uh, he better do it really fast. All right. Uh, what, what do you foresee as the top two uh, uh, groupings of cornerbacks, assuming uh, they stay healthy these next couple of days. Um, you're asking for like Saturday's game or just yeah, in general? yeah, yeah, yeah. Saturday's game. I mean, is everyone going to play? It's kind of Sutton probably won't play. I'm going to guess. Okay. So Wallace and Witherspoon, Millette in the slot. And then beyond that, I mean, it'll be Pierre and somebody. I mean, it had been Lane. Now I'm kind of confused about who it's going to be. Carl Joseph may see some slot reps as well. So, it's still a little to be determined because um, I'm not exactly sure who's going to play, who's not going to play. And there has been some more recent mixing and matching. All right. Some uh, specialists today that uh, that five million dollar kicker was out there doing something, wasn't he? Yeah, I didn't. I have a bad angle to try to track field goals. I usually do it when the reps are there because they signal, you know, good or no good. It felt like it looked like Boswell pushed one wide left 50, but I'm sure he's fine overall. Uh, if you want emergency holder information, I know Cam Sutton did it last year, Gunnar Olszewski doing some holding today. Mm. So uh, if something ever happened where a new holder was needed, I think it would be either Cam Sutton or Gunner. All right. Explain to these people why you did not give Mitch Trubisky that touchdown <laughs> in seven people shots. People got really mad about that. I know. Listen, I, I've been doing this for years. I've always tr- attracted this way. If a quarterback in a, in a live tackling session with seven shots is when the pads are on, uh, runs into the end zone, a guy that cannot be hit. No one can get even close to him without, you know, getting chewed out for it. If you force that guy to scramble and get in the end zone, that's a win for the defense. Now, this play was a little bit different. Maybe it wasn't a true scramble drill. It was a boot to the left, but Trubisky looked downfield. Nothing was there. Then he just ran into the end zone. So if, if, if that quarterback's allowed to be tackled, then I'll give the, the, uh, the win to the offense there. But if you're not allowed to be tackled and that guy's getting in the end zone, to me, that's a win for the defense. If you covered up everything so much, to the point where the quarterback had no choice but to tuck and run. I, I've always put the win of the defense there. So if you want to change it in your own head, that's fine. I make that very clear, very transparent, but it's apparently a third rail that I did not know existed. And you qualified that in in, in your diary, right? I do every single time. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll note, you know, 
that they got. Uh, I wrote in there that Trubisky had the rushing touchdown. And then at the end, I write that this was the score. And I, I know the offense scored an extra touchdown, but I give that win to the defense. I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, because think about it this way. If it was a scramble drill and the quarterback held onto the ball for six seconds and then just walked into the end zone, is that not a win for the defense? That's a win for the defense in a real-life scenario. And, and right. for a guy that can't be touched, I mean, I feel like that's a defensive stop overall. So that's not Trubisky owing you money or having keyed your car or anything like that, right? <laughs> it's not a knock on Trubisky. I think people thought like I was like trying to like take something away from Trubisky as if like what he does in seven shots running the football has anything to do with anything. It's it, it's fine. He did nothing wrong. It's just the way that I've always scored things. And I've always made mention of that. And people just got angry today about that. All right. So if you see a differential in the seven shot totals, you have been explained to why Alex has it one way. You can obviously score it whatever way you would like to uh, at at home, but uh, that's, that's Alex's view on a, uh, on a scrambling quarterback in, in seven shots. All right. uh, Anything else? Who, who won today? Offense or defense? Do you think? Um, well, let's see here. I'll say I've been going defense a lot. I mean, the defense didn't have two interceptions. I don't know. It's it pretty close. I've always said the defense, though. I, I'll go offense today by nose. All right. And kind of uh, quantify your 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 overreaction of the day. Uh, put it in put it in a fun, fun term with Robert Splane. A fun term with Robert yeah. Splane. I don't know the best. R- fun really, term. really oversell it. Oversell it. Um. When Robert Splane gives his Hall of Fame speech as the no, guys just no, did this weekend, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't I, know. Robert Splane will be the week one starter alongside Miles okay. Jack. Splane is giving all Devin Bush that he can handle and making okay. this decision really interesting. And if uh, Splane's right. getting reps week one, I would not be surprised by that. All right. I like it. I like it. I like it. Uh, okay. Any any other kind of closing thoughts here? Uh, TD Moultrie is placed on IR officially. I'm writing that up right now. So right. He, rev- he reverted. Yeah. yeah he, waved he, injured. Waved, injured, reverted. Now they'll have, I think, a week uh, to decide whether or not to do something with him. We don't know. Do you know the nature of the injury? No idea. Don't even know when he got hurt. I guess it was Saturday, but do not know. All right. Uh, we don't know what time practice uh, uh, will be or if they're, you know, they're scheduled to be one, obviously, on Wednesday. What's the weather look like? Bad rain. Actually, uh, it might clear out by one, but it, it, it's all. It's been one big mess, but that's uh, fine. We'll make it work. All right. So uh, have your lunch packed early tomorrow, right? With the crust cut off. All right. I'll do it. All right. Uh, Alex, I appreciate it as always. I know the listeners do as well, too. And uh, glad to get this stocked out a little bit early today. Uh, you can. We will be back hopefully again on Wednesday night, recapping what happened uh, during training camp uh, and then go from there. So uh, follow me on Twitter at Steeders Depot. Follow Alex on Twitter at Alex underscore Kazora. Follow the show at Terrible Podcast. Email the show, the Terrible Podcast at gmail.com. If you like what we do and want to donate to the cause, go to Steeders Depot.com. Com. Hit the donate button, upper right navigational bar. Also, if you want an ad free version of the site, go to steedersdepot.com. Hit the ad free button, upper right navigational bar. We certainly do appreciate you listening. If you're listening on YouTube, the version of this, uh, do all that stuff that you're supposed to do like, favorite, uh, share, whatever uh, in there. We sure would appreciate it. Uh, so, in the meantime, as always, thanks for listening to the Terrible Podcast, another special di- edition of the Terrible Podcast, Pittsburgh Steelers Training Camp 2022 with Dave and Alex.